Hello and welcome to Manny Beal and welcome to part, what is it, part 7 I think of my deconstruction of uh, Bernardo Castro's uh, series called Analytic Idealism Course, A Superior Hypothesis. Um, so I'm a, a, a little more than 24 minutes into part 4, uh, which is uh, one hour and 38 minutes long. So this might take a few, you know, uh, parts on my front to get through it. But um, as I find uh, metaphysics to be of, let's say, the utmost importance to get right. Otherwise, if you don't get it right, you get the rest of your philosophy spectacularly wrong, right? Um, And maybe that's why Bernardo Castro doesn't attempt to do the rest of philosophy, uh, epistemology and ethics, right? Um, but let's just, uh, you know, you're probably here from the last uh, part and, and just want to get along you know, or get, get going. So let's head into it, right? And this is a very handy starting point. Try not to judge this story yet. I'm trying to give you a complete story first, and then we can get critical about whether this story is really the best one. Right now, I just you to I just want you to follow uh, my line of a story. It, it, he's calling it a story. Um, it's just you know, okay, it's not a biggie, I guess, right? It's a, it's a number of choice of words and so on. But I would be careful, you my personally, I would not call it a story, right? It's sort of a, you know, like the Bible story, something like that, right? It's a story somebody told, and I'm now I'm, you know, I'm creating a new story for you to, you know, delve into. Mm, I'm just not fond of that word, right? In in this connection with rigid philosophy. Or at least what I would suppose and hope would be rigid philosophy, but I'm I'm not too sure. So both are experiences that correlate with one another, brain function and... Aren't you violating the, you know, the hard problem of consciousness here? You're saying they correlate. Okay, correlate. Maybe you're not violating because it has to be causation then, right? But you're, you're you know, you're balancing on an edge here, right? You're sort of talking about correlations between my experience and what is going on in that in, in, in experiential world, right? So the correlation is close to you, stepping into causation, right? It's almost as, uh, uh, correlation is half a step into causation, right? If there's a correlation, it's sort of, there might be causation here, right? You just, you just have to make, make sure that you stay on the right side of the, the hard problem of consciousness. Because metaphysics can't answer the hard problem of consciousness either, right? But or, or, uh, idealism, right? Idealism, would, a good idealist philosophy would point out that no, you can't get to answer the hard problem of consciousness because it's a part of that realm which you have no access to. You can make the question, you can, you can, as you can make the question, is there something I can't access? Well, yes or no? I would say yes, or at least that's an axiom I would state in my philosophy, right? But then if, if you ask me, how does that become my experience? I can say it's unknowable. You can't access it, right? And therefore you can't access an answer to the hard problem of consciousness. It's the idealist uh, answer would be, it's the impossible problem, right? One is the extrinsic brain <clears throat> function. The other is the intrinsic in our life. Both so he's just brought in these two terms, extrinsic and intrinsic. Okay, so he's talking as if there are two realms, right? But, but apparently he is not going to tell you about the reduction base yet. He's sort of grooming you into sort of, you can't get out of it. And, and then it just falls out of all his fabulations here, right? Uh, so he's getting close to the reduction base, but not illuminating you, but then telling you about all sorts of abstractions around this reduction base. And, and I guess at some point he's going to jump in and say, this is a re reduction base. And it follows from the abstractions I have presented to you, right? 
but he's just going in the wrong direction, right? You have to if the if the philosopher does just does not start with the reduction base, you should reject it because then he's basing his reduction base on his abstractions from his experiences, and the experiences must be closer to that external world he is trying to fabulate about or clarify in his metaphysics, right? The extrinsic perspective is the appearance. Now he says the extrinsic experience. Uh, what was the word? Perspective. Intrinsic perspective. So there must be an extrinsic perspective also, right? Otherwise he's sort of uh, violating the dichotomy. So if there's, uh, I, I might have let him finish, but now I'm, now I'm done it, right? But if there's a perspective about an extrinsic and a perspective about an intrinsic, then what entity has that perspective, right? Is that a third entity of some kind? I'm, I'm just calling it entity for, for lack of a better term, right? So now he is going into that infinite regression of awareness, in my opinion, right? He's saying, okay, there's these two. How can I talk about it? Well, there, there's a perspective. Okay, so that's a third viewpoint uh, or, you know, point of view or, or, or what's it called? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm lagging the term here, right? But, you know, understand that it's like if I, I have a perspective that is extensive, a, a perspective that is interesting, but what is having that perspective? You are in the experience, right? You are looking from inside your experiences. You can't extract yourself and look down upon your experience and says there's this and there's that, right? Because then you are becoming that God, God view mode that you do not have access to, right? You can, you can do it, but you have to state this is an abstraction. I'm working for an abstraction in order to illuminate what I'm thinking about, but it's not a, an experience I can have because it's a purely an abstraction from my experience and the way I'm doing my metaphysics, right? That perspective is purely abstract. So it's not something that you can ground. You cannot use a, an abstraction to ground or argue for your reduction base. But he hasn't ex illuminated, to, to the best of my understanding, what we have been through so far, what his actual reduction base is, right? He has been talking for more than an hour now. He hasn't even mentioned, he has made and mentioned the idea of reduction base, but he hasn't illuminated anybody. He's trying to, you know, put little pointers in your mind so that you sort of, uh, you know, you're, you're groomed in a certain direction so you sort of can't get out of it and you're sort of, okay, I guess he's right kind of approach, right? Instead of just saying, I don't give a crap about panpsychism. I don't give a crap about materialism. The, I don't have to fabulate about people who have got it wrong, right? If you were going to tell me about how you created a bicycle, you're not going to start, spend a couple of hours telling me all of those who didn't have success in creating a bicycle. No, you would start by saying, I did this, I did that, I did that the other, and that's why it's a bicycle and that's why it works, right? So it's like he is approaching it in, in a way where he's kind of, you know, like the Pied Piper, he's luring you in a certain direction. So you're sort of using words to sort of manipulate your mind some, some way or another, right? So it's, it's uh, basically sophist, this. Brain function is what my conscious inner life looks like when it's observed by a brain scientist. No, a function is an abstraction. It's not something that looks... It's, it's an abstraction of your experience. You can't say it is an experience if it's an abstraction from an experience. Because if you say it's an experience, it has to have some kind of empirical data. It has to have a sound, it has to have a color, it has to have a taste, and so on. Uh, at least one of these, right? So brain function, what color does it have? What sound does it have? Yeah, I know you, 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 uh, you know... Uh, splatters of color on a computer screen is not the brain, right? So be careful you're not sort of saying, yeah, I've seen the brain on a, on a computer picture. No, 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 that doesn't work. That's not what we're dealing with, right? 
Because that's just some, you know, uh, some electronic blemish on a screen, right? Um, so, brain function, what color does a brain function have? I don't know. I have never seen a brain function, right? I've never tasted a brain function. I've never smelled a brain function. So it's not something that exists. It can merely be an abstraction from your experience, right? But since you yourself said the foundations is your experience, now you're calling an abstraction of the experience an experience, right? Now, you making a, an error category like that says everything about how bad this philosophy is. I'm not saying your, your conclusions or what you're describing is necessarily completely wrong. But you making a category error like this is a death knell in, 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 in this metaphysics, right? I have to reject it. Go back to the drawing board and start from scratch, right? I have to reject this because it's somebody uh, creating a bicycle and saying that wheel is also a saddle, right? It's like th that guy is talking about a wheel and all of a sudden he starts to call it a saddle. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> is he creating a bicycle and he doesn't even know the difference between a saddle and, and he's sort of conflating the ideas, right? Making category errors and it's it even worse than uh, mistaking a saddle for a wheel or, or the other way around, right? I reject this outright, right? I, I can't get inspired, but, but I'm not taking this as any kind of gospel in any shape or form when you make glaring errors like this, right? Through a brain scanner. I'm not saying that brain function generates my conscious inner life. That leads to much more complication. It leads into the heart problem of consciousness. It's a much more committal uh, step to take. I'm just saying that brain function is what inner experience looks like when observed from a certain perspective, namely a second or third person perspective. This is the second least or third, Second or third person? But you are only one person. You are alone with your experiences. Why are you talking about second persons or third persons? Who are they? Who, who, who the hell are they? It's your cat and your, your wife or what? Well, what are they? Third person. I'm not experiencing a third person, right? I can't use uh, any notion of a third person perspective to describe my first person experiences. I, I don't get, I simply, I can't follow it anymore, right? It's too complicated. There are too many words floating around that hasn't been clarified and also contradicts each other to some extent, right? It's just a word salad that sounds like if I was doing biology and I say, yeah, the cell and, you know, DNA flying in, into mitochondrial, uh, you know, cell walls of, uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever, so throwing around uh, uh, biological terms and think that I've created the best biology ever, right? But I'm just throwing around words that are sort of disconnected from any cohesiveness, sort of starting from this basic point and going to the next point, going to the next point, keeping, keep, constantly keeping, making sure that you're not bringing in terms you haven't identified or labeled or clarified in your philosophy and so on. It's just... Now there are second persons and third persons, and there are two different perspectives. Uh, and who's having that perspective? Is that the second person or the third person? Or it's all one mumbo jumbo now, right? This reeks of mysticism to me, right? I want to argue that, uh, as we've seen, there is an experiencer. I want to argue that there is only one experiencer. And why do I want to do that? It's because it would make things a lot. There is only one experiencer. Is, oh, so now we are going to God mode here or what? So I'm just that corpse that through which this sort of one experiencer manifests. is just using my corpse to manifest whatever he does, right? Now this is going to be interesting. 
easier. It would give us a lot more, a much more promising path towards an explanation for the facts of life in existence than otherwise. Because if there are the, mo the, the facts of life and existence, holy shit, is that what you think metaphysics is attempting to do? Oh, man. <laughs> God damn, he's ambitious, right? Multiple, fundamentally distinct experiencers, we run into all kinds of problems again. Like, why would nature be such that fundamentally distinct experiencers... What, what just... is nature? Is na nature, is that something you experience? Otherwise, why are you labeling it? Because you're talk if, if you're talking about that which you can't experience, can that be nature? Because when I talk about nature, it's something that I can experience, like a lion and a tree and a flower and strawberries and whatever, right? That's nature. But are you talking about my experience now? Or your own experience, maybe, right? It's not clear what you're talking about, right? Are you in that realm or the, or the experiential realm? Where are you? You're just, you know, you're pendling all over the place and talking about there's one experience and that there's two perspectives and there are third persons and oh my god it's confusing right so it would be nice if there were a way to make sense of reality by postulating only one experiencer and then finding a way to what do you mean make sense of reality now you're talking you talked about nature now you're talking about reality what is that what is reality and nature compared to the, the experience. I mean, you can't just start throwing around words, as I'm saying, right? And then thinking that you have explained anything, right? I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It has to be more rigid than this. I know this is not a philosophical deep dive presentation of, of your metaphysics, but it's, it's a seven part course that is uh, hours and hours long so it should be possible to read some kind of rigidity in, in this presentation. I haven't seen it yet, right? Distinct subjects of experience arise from this one fundamental experiencer. That's the motivation for what, for what I'm saying in this line. So there's one experiencer of which the, I am a, a just an inconsequential subject of so I'm, uh, uh, what I'm hearing is that there is some kind of God, let us use that word because I'm, don't, I'm not sure what to put on it, right? But I would believe that's why uh, Bernardo Castro is so popular among all these woo-woo crazy religious people, right? He can't, he's, sort of a, he's trying to bridge the gap between uh, mysticism and science, right? I, I, I mean, you know, I, I might be pocket philosophizing now, but he has stated in previous uh, podcast that he had a, a Catholic, I think, Brazilian mother and a scientific Danish father, right? Now that's, that's a, uh, you know, that's a collaboration of a weird kind, right? And, you know, don't underestimate the power of mommy, as I say, right? Mommy has a great power over her children, right? And specifically if the father is a weak one, right? So whatever bullshit that mother tries to inflict on her children, the children will defend somehow or another, right? If they don't defend it, it feels like they are rejecting their mother and maybe their father, right? Don't underestimate estimate the power of mommy, right? So when he's trying to bridge this gap, I can't help thinking he's trying to bridge the gap between his mother and his father, right? He wants to make good scientific approaches and then start to talk this uh, one thing, God uh, manifesting through metaphysics, and, and then we have an experience which we can describe using uh, science, right? And then everything fits together in his world, right? Then his mother and father and himself fits together in this <clears throat> triumvirate, which is sort of, Freaky. <laughs> but that's just my pocket philosophizing, right? Or psychologizing, maybe, right? 
states, if the matter in my brain is what my conscious inner states look like when observed from the outside, then the same should apply to the... Observed from the outside? Observed from the outside? Of what? 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 <laughs> what? Uh, do you have some outside thing making observation for you and then telling you I have this observation about your outside? Is that a second or third person or is that the God thing which is the big mind at, uh, at large, the, the big mind through which you're just an insignificant apparently little speck with a, in a subjectivity that doesn't matter apparently, right? That's uh, what I think is going into. I don't, I don't understand this, right? It should be simple and straightforward. So people say, of course it's this way, right? Or something along those lines. So they feel comfortable in what you're saying. You're just, you know, fabulating about all sorts of weird stuff. Bringing, you know, 10 different concepts in without even having stated your reduction page yet. I, it's unbelievable, but if you think you're going to revolutionize metaphysics using this kind of mumbo jumbo, I have sad news for you, mate, right? This is not going to crack it, right? Holy crap, man. Why would the same matter when it's not in my brain, but it's constituting stars and galaxies, why would it be something fundamentally different? Therefore, uh, the implication... Why would it be something fundamentally the same? But it, just because you say, why would it be different, doesn't mean you actually can conclude that it's the same. No, it's because you want to tell everybody what is beyond their experience, right? That's clearly what you're going for. It's just, you're just, you're just probing the waters. You're just starting to luring me into your thinking here, or your mysticism, right? But that's what you're going to attempt. I bet you he's going to tell you what is beyond uh, everybody's experience, right? That the universe as a whole is also the appearance of universal conscious inner life, of transpersonal mental states that underlie all nature. Transpersonal mental states? Now we have a few extra categories now. Transpersonal. What's a person? What does it mean is transpersonal? And what's the mental state? He hasn't talked about mental states, at least as far as I can remember. Now there's a sort of a fifth or sixth category. I mean, I can't believe how disorganized this is, right? It's just a stream of consciousness, you know, brain farting onto paper or brain farting into a video, right? This is completely useless, incoherent babbling that has no bearing on anything. I can be just close to comprehend what the fuck you're saying. It's one big confusion, in my opinion. I'm going sort of on a hyperbole here, but I'm really, really annoyed about somebody claiming to have a superior hypothesis, and then he just throws words at me. It's so disgustingly bad. I, I'm, I'm, I, it's, it's like, oh man, right? It's like, yes, because academic philosophy has been corrupted by state power, right? All philosophers are dependent on the state somehow or another. So they are careful not to bite the hand that feeds them, right? So they can't go into some kind of philosophy and they haven't been able to do, or they have been able to, but they haven't dared do that for more than a hundred years, right? So there's basically nothing to talk about when you get to academic philosophy. It's all a pile of bullshit. It's only people who willingly shut the fuck up about things that are actually important in everyday life, right? That's why somebody like, you know, some sort of mediocre philosopher pops out uh, because there's a lack of actually decent, honest 
integral uh, uh, philosophers with high integrity who can actually stand up and talk philosophy. Then all sorts of weirdos pop up now, right? After a hundred years of corrupted academic philosophy. And, you know, Stephen Molyneux is another good example, right? It's like... Um, and w when you deconstructed that, like I do here, man. Okay, tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me what... Wh Tell me wh why uh, why I don't understand this, right? Tell me why I, I, I think it's so completely useless and, and confusing, right? It's like, um, and, 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 and not alone, it's, it's confusing, at the, but it's at the same time as the same person says, I have a superior hypothesis, and it's actually the only one that functions, right? It's like some kind of weirdo megalomania that is... Uh, you know, beyond uh, beyond approach, right? It's so hugely incoherent and wrong, uh, sort of from a standpoint that it has to be rigid, which it isn't, right? That you have to read outright, reject it, and say, yeah, there might be something in there that works, but it's so confusing. I have to just say, I'm not going to buy it, right? If you if I just, you see I'm creating this bicycle and then you see that there's a wheel on the on the, on the on the pavement and and the steer is where the saddle apparently should be and so and so yeah, I mean, it works so it's the only bicycle that works I'm saying it doesn't seem coherent to me right I'm not going to take the chance that this is a bicycle right because it doesn't look right to me and there are contradictions built into it and and you know all sorts of things that I don't think you know, two pounds of potatoes uh, attached to one wheel. It's like, I don't understand why there are potatoes on that wheel, right? I'm not going to buy this bicycle. There might be something in that bicycle that is great, but it looks like it's a freak to me, right? <laughs> I'm not going to buy it. And this is a picture of a mouse's brain. And uh, they are similar. Uh, I, I forgot to mention there was some picture, two pictures that one was the mouse brain apparently, and the other was the universe, right? But <clears throat> the point is nobody is experiencing that. These are constructed images. Nobody has experienced that directly. It's it's run through a computer and it has been digitized or whatever, and it has been recolored and reframed and re whatever, right? Nobody is experiencing that, right? These are mental presentations created by people who possibly have some idea of what it should look like, right? This is lazy argumentation, right? It's, it's you are being manipulated, right? He manipulates you into accepting when he's going to drop at some point down the line the reduction base, right? which is going to be mind or something like that, right? And I've listened to his stories before, so I know actually where we are going, but I'm sort of pretending that we are sort of seeing this for the first time, right? Of course, he's going to say everything is mind, right? And then he can go about saying anything he wants because that mind is everywhere, right? You can't, you can't argue against it, right? Because actually mind is an abstraction and he's, he's going to use an abstraction as a reduction base, right? Okay, we are at 30 minutes and 22. I think I'll stop here because it seems like we're going into some uh, woo-woo territory here, right? So, uh, consider joining the Discord server. Link should be below. A lot of guys uh, discussing philosophy and all sorts of things. Also art and music and movies and, you know, whatever. All, every, all sorts of stuff on my Discord server. So, please join in uh, and... Everything is, uh, there's nothing that is, you know, uh, out of the question, nobody's going to be deleted or, or censored or, you know, copyright infringement or anything like that, right? Uh, the only thing I ask of you is to attempt doing uh, good argumentation strategies, right? And not sort of just being annoying or something like that. Then you might, in the end, ultimately risk being kicked from my server because you are destroying a, a good communication rather than participating in keeping it great right but as long as there's no opinion that is wrong there's no opinion that is right everybody is free to come on board so please join in 
share, like, and subscribe, and consider a donation if you think this is great work I'm doing, right? So that would encourage me to keep going, right? So <clears throat> have a nice day. See you in the next one.